Hello everybody, this is Mr. Cole again. Um, this is our second time doing this, so hopefully this is the first time on your own, so I hope it hasn't been too much stress trying to get to this YouTube video, but um, today we are going to talk about the women's suffrage movement. Um, the women's suffrage movement is very much so um, kind of the defining impact of the progressive movement. Um, so what the heck is women's suffrage? Well, Women's suffrage is not women's suffering. I remember I had a student one time who made this big passionate defense about why we need to end women's suffrage. Well, actually women's suffrage, the word suffrage means the right to vote. All right? It does not mean suffering. So anytime you see that suffrage, we're talking about voting. So the women's suffrage movement was the movement to allow women to vote. Now, kind of early in the women's suffrage movement, before the progressive era, we have famous leaders like Susan B. Anthony, um, who really gets the ball rolling in terms of women's rights and women's suffrage. Su I almost said suffering, women's suffrage. Uh, she worked to do a couple things as well than just suffrage. Um, she worked for the, uh, the temperance movement, which is basically the idea of prohibition, banning alcohol. Temperance is the banning of alcohol. Uh, she also worked to end slavery and started the first... Uh, women's Suffrage Association. You will see that often the temperance movement, the movement of prohibition of trying to ban alcohol, and the women's rights movement going to go hand in hand. Um, they're kind of uh, a coalition together, and they work to get their amendments passed around the exact same time. Now, Susan B. Anthony was actually arrested in 1872 for trying to vote. Uh, this is an example of civil disobedience. Um, she gave this big impassioned speech after she was arrested um, and really got the ball rolling in terms of women's suffrage. Now, what she formed was the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Uh, this was the biggest organization that worked to allow to fight for women the right to vote. Um, three huge, huge, huge leaders um, of this group, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucy Stone, and Susan B. Anthony. Uh, I put on there old school suffrage leaders. All right, these are the first people to go. Um, they also worked for right to resolve on happy marriage, uh, property rights for women, the right to vote. All right, this is a big women's rights organization. At the time, women really don't have rights. After they're married, they're kind of almost still viewed as like a property, uh, not necessarily viewed as a citizen who is able to enact all of their rights of citizenship. So they work to fight against this. Um, very big important group, organize a lot of rallies, organize marches uh, in order to try to um, bring support for their issue. Now they kind of had two different ways that they were going to go about it. Two strategies to get women's suffrage. The first one is a constitutional amendment. A constitutional amendment would make for sure across the entire country that women would be allowed to vote. The problem with the constitutional amendment, though, is it's very, very, very difficult to amend our constitution, to lock it in stone. What you need is two-thirds of both houses of Congress. So you need two-thirds of the Senate and two-thirds of the House of Representatives. That alone is nearly impossible, especially in today's world. You then need three-fourths of the states to agree to that amendment in order for it to be ratified, for it to become a part of our Constitution. So it's very difficult to do that. The other way was to try to get individual states to permit women to vote in their elections. So there was no amendment that said women could not vote, but there was no amendment that protected women's right to vote. So it was up to the states to decide if women were allowed to vote or not. Only a select few allow women to vote. Um, most do not. But it wasn't something that no women across the entire country were allowed voting. All right, so uh, a new, genera new generation of leaders comes in after Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And they are much, much more intense in trying to get change. They go about it um, significantly more uh, aggressively. Uh, than these other ladies, and, and two of these are uh, Carrie Chapman Kent, uh, Alice Paul, Lucy Burns. Uh, these suffragettes, another word for someone who was fighting for women's suffrage, um, used 
parades, picketed the White House, burned uh, President Wilson's speeches, um, really, really big on protests. One of their big protests was hunger strikes. All right, so they intentionally went without food uh, in order to bring a um, some attention to the issue. All right, they are arrested for this. They are force fed uh, with a jails literally force the food down their throats basically um, very brave leadership and aggressive leadership really really stressing trying to make a change but ultimately uh, these women's rights organizations come and they do finally get an amendment to the Constitution passed and this is the 19th amendment what the 19th amendment did was give women the right to vote so finally, no matter what state in the country you lived in, women had the right to vote. Right? States could not deny the right to vote based on gender. This also marked the last major, major, major reform of the progressive era, because this happened in 1920. I'll go ahead and add that in there, that it happened in 1920, just in case you want to add that in. Um, so it's kind of the, the signals the end of the progressive era in terms of um, big reforms, big changes that happened. Now, in class, what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at some images and some documents from the women's rights movement and see what their struggle, uh, what their arguments, what their um, lives were like when they were trying to fight for such a basic right. Um, so that's what we're going to do in class tomorrow. So uh, I can't wait to see you then. Have a good night.